Welcome and thank you very much for coming. Um, it's really a privilege to share something I'm so passionate about and I'm very passionate about outdoor spaces, about home homemaking in general. So I want to really bring in the whole, my holistic approach in how I talk about this. Um, and I wanted to let you know that we are a full service renovation company doing all kinds of design and construction and we're giving away a free big picture consultation if you wanted to give us your contact information and enter a draw um, you'd have a chance to win a big picture consultation I need the clicker there okay so let me tell you a little bit about um, give you hopefully some inspiration for your outdoor spaces Um, when I work with clients, I'm very interested in getting to know all about you. I want to hear about your values to start with so that we have a North Star to guide us to your home, the ideal home for you. I want to know how you live, who lives with you, who visits you, what your street is like, where the views are, where the noises are, what, what we can capitalize on, what we need to calm down to make it more valuable. So we begin with our design programming questionnaires, which are pretty extensive. They're fun, um, and we encourage you to look at them not as homework, but as sort of an opportunity to reflect. And we ask you a lot of questions, starting with your values and then moving into your needs. This is a case study of a client who came to me. You're going to find that I'm showing real homes here the kind of homes that I imagine you or I live in, these aren't McMansions, these aren't billion dollar budgets, these are mostly people in the sort of downtown area, some in Orleans and Canada with modest homes, not extravagant homes, who just wanted to have something that was a little more inviting to engage outside and we've got some interiors as well. So this is a client down in Westboro who came to me and um, this is the before obviously and it was typical of what I see a lot of times when there's outdoor planning they had a sunroom put on here on the left side and it blocked all the southern light to the house which was really a problem because the sunroom was covered and it wasn't actually very pleasant to sit in plus it blocked all the light where they wanted it in the living room and the great room and even the kitchen to a certain extent and then they had hired someone to put this deck on and they had wanted it to tuck in and have the stairs wrap and then it would have a certain integrity with their backyard but the carpenter misunderstood and built it out so they, they just overall weren't happy. If you go to my website there's a really fun video called What If Your House Just Isn't Loving You Back and it's about five minutes long and it shows the case studies of the different iterations of what we offered them in terms of solutions to add value. Today we're not going to do that. We're going to enjoy looking at some nice outdoor spaces. So, imagine if you have this dilapidated old garage in a downtown backyard. This is like, um, oh, down by the river, um, sorry, Parkdale kind of area. Um, there were these cute curly cues on the garage that were led to a bit of inspiration because I'm wanting to learn about you and your site and take cues from there. So, oh, if we hit play, two, two really short little video of the process, which is kind of fun. Oh, no volume today, but you'd hear the saws whizzing. And I wanted to just mention I'm a carpenter by trade, and this is this site that we're going to be exploring a little bit, just a little bit of kind of background. Again, on my website, we've got MKDB TV, where the whole video's there. It's kind of fun. So... We took this dilapidated or old garage and used it as inspiration to create something pretty charming. Um, the garden pagoda, which they really enjoy, and they wanted a hot tub back there, but they didn't want a fiberglass modern monstrosity. They're very comfortable, but they're not always very beautiful, especially they can work in a very modern application, but this was a very organic application. So we found the beautiful hot tub out in BC. They make them. You can have them with um, wood-fired and salt water and jets. It's quite wonderful, but the stairs were ugly. So I built, along with the beautiful pagoda, the custom spiral staircase to go with it. Not me alone. I have much better carpenters working with me. Um, and then we just played. Uh, I'm a real believer in um, 
outdoor spaces are where we can be truly creative and liberated. We don't have the kind of rules we have about kitchens and bathrooms and different things like that. So they're a wonderful place to be whimsical and enjoy. Um, if it suits you, it, everybody has their own style and my job is to get to know what suits you. So one of the things you'll notice in this project is most of the fences in the room, in, I call it, I guess, an outdoor room, I think of it that way, they're all different. Over here there was some diamond lattice and an existing fence and I hate to be wasteful, wherever we can reuse things that are solid we like to. So I just put the cedar boards up and covered up the diamond lattice so that the other people on the other side of the fence could have it still, but it didn't, it didn't dictate the style of the yard I was working in. And then here, we wanted a little more privacy and a, a little playfulness, so we just scabbed on the extra piece and it worked out quite nicely. Um, this is another fence and in this one, we have a little peekaboo window and a, a little hat. So I just want to encourage you that if you've got three sides in your outdoor room, all the fences don't have to be the same fence. The materials are going to cost about the same, whether you do special designs or all the same, but you've got the opportunity to be expressive and creative or work with someone like myself who is and, and get something that is really quite valuable and precious. It does cost a little bit more in terms of labor, but I always feel I used, I started out as a textile artist and I would always cringe and cry when I saw people knitting these elaborate gorgeous things out of, out of um, you know, synthetic wools and not well designed and all that work goes into it anyway. So out of respect for the materials and out of respect for the um, opportunity, it's nice to do a bit more. Now this is a very humble house, this is my home that I bought a couple years ago and I haven't even begun to start landscaping the backyard. I have some visions and maybe I'll be back next year with the afters. But what I wanted to share out of this picture is even just the simple little deck here. That's a lunch. Chantal, my wonderful associate, uh, interior designer who works with me and I, that's our lunch one day because we work from home and we sit out on the porch. And then my nephew is there in the backyard with the overgrown dandelions and the greenery everywhere, and I kind of love it. I almost don't want to mess with it because there's a charm and beauty to this little 50 by 50 square foot yard. And when I'm in bed, I try to imagine what do I want to be looking out at. So this is another client. Again, this, is, this view is right through here. And it started out, we did the interior and exterior, and there was... Um, Oh, hideous wrought iron staircase from the 60s, black, and um, everything was very not beautiful. And so we did this interior that was so lovely, and I purposely intentionally put a natural slate on the floor with the intention of carrying that back out when we removed these patio stones, which we did a bit later. And, um, and then I'm, what I'm trying to encourage you to think about is what do you want to be looking at from inside your home? This is our opportunity to reclaim our views. Sometimes they're, so, they're not beautiful like this. Here we just want to not get in the way of it. But sometimes, oh, that's my backyard from the house before this. And again, I was just saying, sometimes we have a view that we just want to enjoy and enhance, but sometimes we need to take charge and see if we can make something beautiful to look at. Um, a friend of mine called this the porch princess piece. Um, I've been lucky to attract some nice media because people are, I, I'm very original in my designs and it's appreciated I guess. And one of the things that I love to do is porches. Porches can be a gift to the street and an opportunity to connect with your neighbors. They're a way of graciously inviting people into your home and it's your first chance to say something about who you are. So this one is um, just adding this little swoop to the porch added a charm that the clients and the neighborhood really loved. And otherwise it's a pretty classic porch but when we take it to something just a little bit unique we can add a lot of value. Then I added on the left a little um, fence, just very simple. And um, I ended up doing like six or seven porches on that street. Again, it's on like Broadview or something. Just because, and they're all different, just because people really enjoyed having something that was charming and suited to them. 
This is the before on the left of a house in Rockcliffe that I did the interior and the exterior of. And, or sorry, on the right is the before. <laughs> um, and the picture doesn't do justice to how awful it was. It, the stairs curved and that jutting out triangular thing made me feel like it was attacking me. And we also wanted to get another car in the driveway without it looking like a parking lot. So we took away the triangular garden bed and did this beautiful porch with the nice beefy pillars and the, um, the dental and just something that was very classic and lovely that it's 10 years later it looks just as good and it's quite lovely. And this is a porch in the Glebe that I did a few years ago, quite a few. And I love it, it's beautiful, but I didn't love the color it was painted. Nowadays, if you work with me, I'm 10 years older, maybe 15, and I wouldn't let you paint something that we don't agree on because it just, it takes away the value. Um, there was such opportunity for a lightness and a playfulness with the two colors and stuff, and it could have been a blue, but that wasn't the right blue. And so now I make sure I stay with you all the way home. In fact, that's one of our mottos is we'll see you all the way home and, and we'll discuss it and we'll make sure we both feel that this is the right choice for your house. I, I, I find the only times clients have been upset is when they haven't listened to me and I've learned to just be patient. I know it sounds arrogant, but it's true. I could let you talk to them. In fact, I have it on film. Um, and so I've just learned to be patient and get there. And it just takes a bit of time to really explore. Also color studies. So imagine if this was your home and this is a beautiful home. I call this a little black dress for the kitchen um, in the Glebe. How would you want your exterior to relate to that? Because that's what I want you to be thinking about is that what I, my life's thesis is harmony. That's one of my, well, it's probably my highest core value. So I'm always a... I'm always working towards harmony in an iterative way. Um, so, okay, you're probably wondering what gingerbread houses or eco gingerbread villages have to do with outdoor spaces, and actually a lot, because it's again an opportunity where there's no rules, where we can be very playful. And this happens to be um, a very effective, uh, eco-effective place. This, it's called Green Speed and it was entered in the Habitat for Humanity um, gingerbread house competition. And I incorporated rain gardens, a water feature, solar panels, windmills, clotheslines, recycling, food. Food is everywhere growing in a way that's prolific and abundant and beautiful so the vegetables aren't just relegated to the vegetable patch. And um, I really encourage you all when you're thinking about your homes, there was just someone here talking about wildlife, like what can you do to bring wildlife into the home? And um, that's another gingerbread house um, winter scene. What can you do to bring wildlife and attract birds and different things like that? This is a little postage stamp of a backyard in uh, sort of not Vanier, Overbrook kind of area. So again, right downtown. So you can see what the neighbors have, and then this is what we built on the left. And um, it's, it's quite delightful. That was sort of an early days, and then it evolves, and we had a lot of fun with this. The client was just, she knew my work and my reputation, and I call a lot of my clients clients because they become friends through the process of working together. And, um, that Sylvia definitely has and she just loves it so she wanted shade because her backyard was very very sunny and untenable but she didn't want to block light into her home in the winter because that's what makes winters bearable so by having the things growing on these decorative um, spider web trellises we were able to have both and it turned out really beautiful and then we just played. I used a copper spindle just from the plumbing store, a regular, this is just copper piping. And then we decided to add a copper uh, wind chime, which was just hung from the, the rafter. And when the neighbors complained it was too loud, we just separated it out a little bit more and then it tinkled the way we wanted to. So all this within, is within our realm of possibilities. And then we put a lot of art and sculpture this was featured in Ottawa Magazine 
which was quite lovely, and they dubbed me the Philosopher Queen, which of course went to my head. <laughs> but it was, I think, because of my approach to um, really caring about making homes for people that was recognized. Um, so again, just a few more shots of this. It was nice because there were a lot of different moments in this place. The two Adirondack chairs, some seating downstairs, and the upper deck had a nice um, eating area. And then there's a winter view because it's always, I'm always conscious of what are you going to be looking at during the nine months of the year when we're not outside, sadly, these days. And this is what you're looking at. This is her through the window of her house. So it's a modest townhouse in, in sort of the outskirts of downtown, and she's just enjoyed it so much. This one is a good six, eight years old as well. And if you look, would you rather be looking at the vinyl siding and the pressure-treated fences, or would you like to reclaim this space and this landscape and view into something that is charming and uplifting? This is uh, something else I'm passionate about. I teach at Yes Tomorrow Design Build School. I want to encourage you all, if you have any ambition of picking up a hammer or designing your own house, Yes Tomorrow offers two-day to two-week to two-month work, uh, learn with your hand courses. It's five um, hours away in Vermont, and it's a wonderful place where you can learn with your hands. This is my best friend, Buzzy, and, and we're teaching a course here on mosaics, and we took this grotto at the campus. We incorporated everything. You can see there's an old saw blade there, and marbles, and broken pottery, and all kinds of things. Yestermorrow.org. Yeah, not-for-profit, out to change the world, one house at a time. It's wonderful. Um, and uh, you can do this in your backyard. You can, you can do it on a piece of plywood and, and mount it on a fence, or you can have the kids get involved or whatever you like, or you can commission someone like myself to create an original work of art for your backyard. And it's a wonderful way of just uplifting things. This is, again, uh, this I did... <laughs> I spent a whole summer on this, like, not during, the, like, uh, on my off hours, kind of, my hobby for the summer. I went around to all the granite suppliers and dug through their mountains of wasted stone and brought it home and sorted it on the garage, the driveway, and did this beautiful walkway and um, for my father. And it was just a labor of love and a delight and it made something again very special that's there forever out of garbage um i, I just wanted to bring in a couple of interior shots of where we can play a little bit with mosaic and rhythm the one on the right is the modest house that i'm living in now and i find that i can go into a bathroom with a nice listello very beautifully decorated and i'm bored with it after two or three times whereas Every time I'm laying in my tub, I'm just kind of enjoying the randomness of it. And it, it keeps a freshness. So, um, again, a little bit of mosaic detail on the inside of a house. Uh, this fence <laughs> is, is uh, it's just, it's gotten a lot of attention. It's won awards and stuff, this backyard, because it was just a beautiful, gracious entry into a very lovely backyard. It, it, um, it's crafted as if it was a piece of furniture and uh, the clients love it and people seem to really enjoy it and again it's, it's just a simple house with a wonderful, um, a, a wonderful gift to the street and community. Um, this is the inside of that house so you can see again there's a relationship between the indoors and outdoors. The clients really love um, Asian inspired art and furniture so I built this moon gate in their between their dining room and living room and then the kitchen on the left is also a kitchen I did for them and it's it's a princess kitchen I wouldn't want this kitchen but it's not I love it though and my job is to give you the kitchen that you would love to have not the kitchen that I need which is more industrial because I make a big mess <laughs> Um, but they love it and they wanted the gold detailing and it really fit with their har the harmony of their home and their outside. We went back years later and did their bathroom. This is again a new suburb just behind Cité La Collegiate on Montreal Road. And um, it's the drawing, we started in this case with a drawing. Often I don't, um, but here we did. 
and we have um, you know a humble house like I mean not I don't mean it's not valuable but it's not like some three billion dollar thing or even three million dollar thing this is a four or five hundred thousand dollar house maybe ten years ago um, and they had these services in the front that were you know those hideous electrical or whatever services you don't know when you buy the house who's going to get stuck with those and they got stuck with them and they said Monica what are we going to do and I said oh we'll build pagodas so these are removable they're made of cedar and landscaping fabric so they breathe and you can lift them off when you need to service them and it 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 ended up you know being a treat and other neighbors who didn't have the services asked me to build some for them just for fun and then if we go into the back um, it was a lovely opportunity it's not a big yard but we were able to do a lot of creative uh, spaces here um, we did a little tea house again with a swoop in it I'm I, I love Asian inspired things I think um, and they like to meditate and write so they wanted a little tea house where they could visit and write and do little things and then the Asian gate um, Again, you'll see the fences on all the different sides of this. They often have a different rhythm. They're not all the same fence. And I added these louvers, which are quite wonderful, because in the city we can be boxed in physically, but also um, air doesn't flow as well. So if you put fences all around, you might be suffocating yourself. So by having the louvers, they have some effect over the airflow and the privacy so if you want to chat with your neighbor you can but you can also close off and then we did some beautiful mostly native species landscaping the fence was a piece of art that i designed for a show and for my father he actually in, in designed it and um and then it was a bit much for them so we brought it into their home just toned down a little bit and they really love it uh, so that was just a nice one and then again i'm showing you from the inside what they're looking at from their home instead of looking at in this case they're lucky that's the city collegial parking lot behind them instead of other boxes and vinyl and whatnot but i really encourage you to think about reclaiming your views uh, i don't have a better picture of this one but this is from i guess when i quite a while ago 2000 but I built a nice gazebo, and this one was uh, not four season, but three season, because it had weather wall windows on it, and that added an extra month to the, like you could be out there in October, it was great. I don't love the look, but it, it depends on the application. In that case, it worked really well. Now I want to take you, I was featured in Ottawa Magazine for this very modern house. Again, Maine and Lee's right downtown, 1940s bungalow of about 800 square feet that we doubled the size of seamlessly. And we did a very contemporary backyard, you can see it on the right. I'm sorry I don't have more pictures of that, but I have of the front. So again, this this we took right through from initial visualization to interior decorating and everything in between and we did a very contemporary clean lined home and they love it the whole neighborhood does one of the things I wanted to mention is when you are thinking about your outsides you need to be thinking about transitioning to your insides so we've got this that's half the mudroom um, and there's the foyer. I make sure usually to put stone around the entranceway so that you're not tracking in all kinds of muck and wrecking your floors so you can come in with your boots or shoes and be able to settle. Um, sorry. And, and then, so the mudroom's on one side and then this bathroom on the other so you can hose off the dog when you come in or the kids, whatever needs it. And that's something as well you want to think about how your outdoor spaces relate to your indoor spaces, no matter how big or small. Um, this is the porch. I call it porch of the year and um, I love it. There's a third peak that you'll see in the next picture and the beauty of it is this was a very classic neighborhood. There was no corrugated steel before we got there and I wanted to bring it forward but I didn't want to bring it forward in people's face. I wanted a transitional element so the next house that come along could be a little more modern or stay traditional. So we brought the the corrugated steel into the porch and we added it on the addition but we kept the front of the house very classic as a stucco 
and it worked really well. The, the neighbors were uh, older, frankly, than my clients, and it, it was a nice way of sort of transitioning, and everybody seems to really enjoy this house. Um, this is an addition that I did out in Stittsville, I think, like further out than I usually work. We're really well known for urban transformations. And um, these windows originally, they weren't there. They, um, I hadn't drawn them in, I hadn't thought of them. In fact, I had a chimney going up here, so they weren't even an option. But once I framed it in, because we're design build, we have this opportunity, and you have this opportunity, no matter who's building for you, go on site, look around. Be careful, because it's costly when you change things and you have to be thoughtful about it, but don't give up an opportunity to let in more light or, or give yourself a little bit more space, because drawings are good to hang on a wall. They're not great for reality. Really, we need to be in the space and feeling it out, and sometimes something that seemed good is a bit too tight. So on site, I realized, oh, I think we need transoms here. This is going to, you know, this is too big a loss. And all it meant was I had to re-think um, the gas fireplace to a different kind of venting and add in the transoms, and it made for such a pretty space. And then outside, that's the porch of it, and they really love it. Um, this is a nice project. Again, a tiny backyard. I, I don't think it's much bigger, maybe one and a half times this deck and my dog from years ago. And the client loved blue. I don't, <laughs> but I can live with it. And there was that awful diamond lattice and I covered it with copper um, aluminum because I didn't want to waste the fence and it was in good shape. And it looked pretty, like the blue with the copper started to have a harmony. We call the round thing Stargate and we built a little bit of greenery in. We did all the stone. Um, we added uh, awnings for the seasons when we need to protect from the sun, and they love it. Like they, you know, this is right down on Crichton Street near the School of Dance, and actually he was a great supporter of the dance. Uh, uh, he was on the board and whatnot. They've moved now, and the house sold very well because of this backyard. So we added art. Stained glass is wonderful. Um, there's a water feature, a nice, um, uh, sorry, it's not here, but there's a nice water fountain as well. And again, it's just, we have these little opportunities, these little spots that seem humble, but we can actually make them into something quite enchanting and lovely. And here's another. Um, I call this one Raindrops and Spiderwebs, and it's, it's just... It's one of my favorites. It's one of the first ones I ever did, and it was just such a pleasure to create something that was so lyrical and pretty. And Deborah loves it. She's just, she even like all these years later, it's still held up beautifully. And I've been back to do her bathroom, and she just always says everyone loves it. So it's just a pretty, um, just a pretty deck. Um, Swimming pools can be wonderful. I love them. I'm not sure they're all that great for the environment, but I am a fan. Um, in this case, the swimming pool was existing and they needed a, a pool, not a pool cabana actually, it wasn't at all. They had a place for changing, a place to eat and enjoy being outside. They had a lot of cedars. So I built a fairly traditional um, screen porch and made sure I tucked it away from block blocking any light from the house so that, you know, it, it wouldn't obstruct and put a nice curve on the front of it. And then this has a curve, hard to see from here, but similar to a boat. So it, it fit, fit with the theme. And um, yeah, and then this is going into something very classic, but very pretty. So just a very traditional gazebo that it's, they're always fun. They can be screened in or not. And um, right on Manatic water. Um, and we built the deck and the balusters so everything sort of complemented each other. And this was a very traditional house that they really enjoyed. And yeah, it was just a nice place to share a meal or a visit. Um, yeah. And then I wanted to leave you with the idea that there's a saying that I'm sure we've all heard that good fences make good neighbors. And I want to say that beautiful, beautiful fences make harmonious neighbors. 
when we, when, you know, we need our privacy and we need to delineate space. And we also need security, especially outside. I, I, like, I don't want to feel too exposed, but I want to be able to relax and enjoy it. So I really encourage you to think about doing, you know, usually it starts with a fence and think about doing something that's pretty and inviting as opposed to jailing and um, separating, because they don't have to be separating. That's a house in Sandy Hill where I actually approved of the paint job. I thought it looked really pretty. And um, yeah, so that's it. I, I uh, look forward to uh, any of your questions, if you have any, and uh, helping you with anything that we might be able to down the road. It would be our pleasure. Thank you.